by Mubarak Ala Jalani, who is the leader and founder of Al Fukra, which is a terrorist known organization. They've been attached to many attacks, assassinations, and things like that. And their American front is Muslims of America and the Quranic Institute College, which Islamburg is one of the places that that guy founded, Jelani, and another place in South Carolina. And also inside of there is the Quranic Institute, which is run by Muslims of America. So when you look at that and you do the research, it's very interesting. The fact that there's so much secrecy surrounding this place, the fact that the police aren't really going in there, the fact that they don't let many people in there, it's kind of up in the air. And yeah, it's really strange that we go out there and we're very nice. I got out of the car only by myself. I walked up, I uh, shook, shook their hand. I said, hey, my name's Joe Biggs. I'm a reporter. Um, what do I need to do to uh, possibly get a pass to come inside, do some filming, maybe sweep some fears under the rug that people might have or prove what some people have been believing? The guy took my name and number down and hours later, I get a call from this uh, terrorism task force in Binghamton, New York, and the guy said he was with the New York State Police, and he was calling in regards to the fact that they were curious as to why I would go investigate this place. You know, meanwhile, while this is happening, the attack in San Bernardino was just now starting to kick off. So with these things happening, the Paris attacks, the wide open borders, the refugees coming in, not being vetted, the FBI saying that they're not being vetted. Yeah, there's, there's cause for concern, and there's a reason that we should go out and investigate these places to make sure that there's nothing shady going on. And another interesting fact is, yes, you know, I gave my phone number and name at Islamberg to those guys to hand off to their PR guy. How they got Josh's number is beyond me. You know, me and Josh were sitting down getting ready to have dinner, and his phone rang, and he looked at me, and his mouth just kind of dropped open. His <laughs> eyes got big. I bet. And he goes, uh, yeah, how did you get my number? And he just kind of looks at me again, shocked. And he's like, well, how did you get my number? And the guy on the other end said, hey, you know, we're the police. You know, we have our tactics. We have our ways. We can't tell you how. We just know you're there with Joe Biggs and you guys were at Islamburg today. And uh, their conversation was shorter. Mine was maybe five, ten minutes long. But, uh, you know, definitely some interesting things going on. The fact that they want to question us for going to look at this. when We know that there's a problem going on in our country and it's growing steadily every day. All right, we need to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're going to continue this conversation with Joe Biggs right after the break and this investigation into possible radical jihadist training camps right here in the United States of America. InfoWars Nightly News will return right after this. Don't want to miss it. Stick around. Refugees are pouring into our great country from Syria. We don't even know who they are. They could be ISIS, they could be anybody. What's our president doing? Is he insane? Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which one I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News, and we're going to continue our conversation with former Staff Sergeant. Joe Biggs, who is touring the country right now, and he's out there investigating the U.S. Caliphate, there's good possibility that there might be jihadist training camps in operation right here within the United States. Well, as you know, there is a huge national debate going on right now whether or not we should allow Syrian refugees to enter the country, This, especially after the Paris attacks where one of the radical Muslim terrorists may have entered Europe and disguised as, as a, a Syrian refugee. And as a result, there are over 30 U.S. governors, mostly Republicans, who say they will not allow it and they will not accept refugees from Syria. Texas Governor Greg Abbott is leading the charge. As governor of the state of Texas, I will not roll the dice and take the risk on allowing a few refugees in uh, simply uh, to expose Texans to that danger. And by the way, Barack Obama says that it is shameful that these 30 plus governors won't allow immigrants. He says that they have betrayed American values. And Obama even going as far as mocking those of us who feel that some of these Syrian refugees might pose a threat. These are the same folks oftentimes who suggest that they're so tough that uh, just Talking to Putin or staring down ISIL or using some additional rhetoric somehow is going to solve the problems out there. But apparently they're scared of widows and orphans coming into the United States of America as part of our tradition of compassion. Now, first they were worried about the press being too tough on them during debates. Now they're worried about three-year-old orphans. And I can't wait to get Joe Biggs' reaction to that one. You heard the president. He says that you are overreacting or that you must not be very tough if you are worried about three-month-old orphan refugees. What do you think about that? I mean, this is the same thing that we went through last summer, Darren, when there was this huge influx of migrants, uh, illegal aliens, whatever you want to call them. I'm not trying to be politically correct at all. But whatever you want to give them, you know, their name, that huge uh, uh, rush of people coming through the southern borders. And they use the same narrative last time. The president came out 
everyone came out on the Democrat side and said these are young babies and women who need shelter. They need a place to live. And then myself, Jakari Jackson, Josh Owens, Kit Daniels, all of us have been down there, and they are grown men with gang tattoos on their face for the most part. So this whole, oh, we're going to deny these babies from coming in, negative, that's a small part. Yeah, there's some families out there that want to come through and start a new life based off of ridiculous wars that have been started. I can understand that. But until we come up with a better process to vet these individuals, we've got to shut the borders down. We can't let people through because we've seen what happened with the, the illegal aliens coming through the southern border. You've got that lady over in California that got killed. You've got all kinds of instances where people that were multiple sex offenders, criminals, killers, murderers, whatever, coming through and committing more crimes. Well, Joe, Except you, these people are radicalized jihadists. That's right. We've and you proved you're the guy that proved just how easy it is for ISIS or any other potential terrorist to enter the country when you dressed up like an ISIS militant who just beheaded someone on the, <laughs> the Mexican side of the Rio Grande River before you walked right into Texas making Border Patrol, in my opinion, look like a total joke. So the borders are wide open. What do you think about Donald Trump's plan to build a wall to keep the borders secure? I mean, it, it, in some ways it's going to work, you know, but at the same time, people are smart. People find a way around everything. You know, just like when I was in Paris, I was able to maneuver around and find a way past police to be able to get that shot of the dead ISIS jihadi. Or Obama, so Obama shipping them in. Obama ships them in on airplanes. I mean, yeah. exactly. When we put a yeah. wall on the north side, we could put a wall right here across from Canada. It's not going right. to matter when they're being flown in on UPS trucks or whatever and dropped off to parts unknown. And like you were saying earlier, you know, Greg Abbott and all these governors can stand up and say, hey, no refugees in my state. But as long as one state allows them to come in, they will get in to all the rest and spread through. I mean, that's just the truth of it. Well, look, I don't know if Obama has lost his mind or if he is completely oh, he incompetent or, or if he if he's purposely trying to destroy the, this country. Joe Biggs, closing comments. Liberalism is terrorism. The culprits behind yesterday's tragic shooting at a Christmas party in San Bernardino have been identified as devout Muslim Saeed Farouk and his wife Tashfeen Malik. But who did the left rush to blame within minutes, before we knew anything about the shooters, before the bodies were even cold? White people, conservatives, Donald Trump supporters, the NRA, gun owners, pro-lifers, and all men in general. If the mainstream media won't call it terrorism, we will end white terror. Maybe we should put white conservative men in concentration camps to protect ourselves. We can eliminate mass shootings today. Make it illegal for white men ages 15 to 65 to own guns. Yo, GOP, kind of hard to talk about keeping people safe when your peeps are shooting up America. Another day, another mass shooting perpetrated by white men in America. And they're worried about Syrians. White terrorism exists. Digest it. So when are we going to start classifying white men as terrorists? These are the same people who lectured us about not blaming all Muslims for the Paris massacre. And isn't it amazing how the left suddenly lost all interest in the story when it emerged that the shooters were Muslim? The maniacal call to revoke the Second Amendment suddenly disappeared. Why is the left's appetite for gun control almost entirely dependent on the race or religion of the shooter? The feverish urge to label it an act of terrorism suddenly disappeared. Now they're calling it workplace violence despite the fact that the shooters were extremely well prepared, had pipe bombs, assault rifles, wore body armor and GoPro cameras, and left booby traps at their apartment. But this was just an impromptu argument that got out of hand. Okay, Farouk just happened to have tactical gear and explosives lying around at home after his little holiday to Saudi Arabia. And now we learn that numerous neighbors refused to report the couple's suspicious activity before the attack for fear of being labeled racist. Once again, just as with the Bryce Williams shooting, political correctness is now so virulent, it's costing people's lives. But hey, maybe the shooters were offended by the Christmas party. Maybe the victims are to blame for provoking the killers. That's the argument leftists made 
after the Charlie Hebdo massacre. So why not now? Listen.